There are a number of Nintendo Switch games that struggle to hit their intended frame rate, and some that suffer from long load times. However, with the power of modding, you can decrease load times, improve frame rate, and in some cases, increase the targeted frame rate of certain Switch games. Hello folks, Manito here, I hope you're doing good. In this video, I'll be showing you how to set up SysClock, Status Monitor Overlay, Salty NX, Reverse NX, and FPS Locker on your modded Nintendo Switch. These tools work together to boost the performance of your Switch. On the left side, you'll see games running at stock settings, and on the right, games running with all the tools applied. For example, Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity often struggles to hold 30 frames per second. With these homebrew tools, it's noticeably smoother. The difference is night and day. And in addition to overall stabilizing the frame rate of the games and trimming down load times with overclocking, this guide covers how to increase the max frame rate of supported games. For example, Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom both target 30 frames per second by default. But with these tools, you can get them running to 60 frames per second. Sonic and Shadow Generations is another game that also targets 30 frames per second, and it holds it for the most part. But with the tools in this video, you can play it at a nearly flawless 60 frames per second. The performance of this will vary between games, of course. Now, let's go over what's required. You'll need a moddable or already modded Nintendo Switch running Atmosphere Custom Firmware. If you don't have a modded Switch, check out my beginner-friendly guide in the description. It goes over the basic setup of SysCFW and how to use homebrew apps. You'll also need a Tesla menu. Tesla menu is like the quick menu that you can access with the home button, but specifically for homebrew apps. This means we can access the things like SysClock and status overlay on the fly without closing the game we're playing. I have a guide on Tesla menu in the description. Quick note on overclocking. A huge thing to consider before doing this is that overclocking can reduce the overall lifespan of your Switch battery. However, I wouldn't worry about it too much. I've been using SysClock for years on my modded Switch, and while I have noticed that the battery does drain a bit faster in handheld mode even when not actively overclocking, I mostly play docked, so it's not really a big issue for me. But if you mostly play handheld, it's something to consider. And regarding bands and being Wi-Fi safe, the tools in this video are considered Wi-Fi safe. They haven't been known to cause bans. If you're worried, use an already banned switch or consider setting up MUMMC on your switch. More info on bans and MUMMC are in the description. And that's all you need to know in advance before starting this tutorial. But make sure to click that subscribe button and the notification bell to stay notified of future videos, streams, and to support the channel. I noticed most of you that watch these videos are sadly not subscribed, so please subscribe and help build up the channel even more. Thank you for your support. I also have a growing community Discord server where you can talk with me and other members of the community. Now we can finally get into the installation tutorial. Connect your Switch SD card to your PC. I'll be using FTP, wireless file transferring but any other method of moving files over to the SD card is just fine. Open up your preferred browser and search up Retro NX SysClock and go to the GitHub page. SysClock is a sys module that lets you control CPU, GPU, and RAM clock speeds per game. You can overclock for better performance or underclock for extended battery life at the cost of performance. Huge shout out to the Retro NX team and those that contributed to the making of SysClock. For more information on SysClock, you can read up on the GitHub. Now, click Releases. As usual, the latest release will be at the top of the page. At the time of recording, the latest version is 2.0.1, but use whatever is newest when you're following this guide. The setup should still be the same unless otherwise stated on the GitHub, which is why I recommend reading the notes. Download the latest release, Extract it. Now drag the Atmosphere, Config, and Switch folders to the root of your SD card. 
Replace old files if prompted. This will be the case if you're updating from an old version. Next, search up status monitor overlay and open the GitHub page. Status monitor overlay lets you monitor the switch hardware in real time. This overlay shows real-time hardware info of frame rate, resolution, CPU usage, and more. While it doesn't directly improve or hurt performance, it gives you a detailed look at what's happening under the hood. Shout out to Massagrader and those here who contributed to this. Now, click releases. Download the latest release, status monitor overlay.zip. Open it, extract it, now move the config and switch folders to the root of your SD card. And replace old files if prompted. Now go to Massagrader's GitHub and click here, Salty NX. Shout out again to Massagrader and the original creator, Shiny Quagsire. Salty NX is a background assist module that allows code and file level modifications. Several of the tools in this video require it. We'll use Salty NX for reading FPS and resolution and status monitor, running reverse NXRT, and running FPS locker patches. More details on Salty NX are available here on the GitHub page. Now, go to releases, and once again, make sure you're downloading the latest release. Open it, extract it, and move Salty SD and the Atmosphere folder to your SD card. Replace old files if prompted. There we go. Head back to Massagrader's profile once again and select FPS Locker. FPS Locker lets you set custom frame rates and display refresh rates in Switch games. You can set games to run at higher or lower frame rates and even adjust the refresh rate of your monitor and the Switch tablet itself. I won't be covering messing with refresh rates here. More info on that can be found on the GitHub. Just a heads up that this doesn't play nice with every game out there, but it works with a lot. Some games need a config patch to go above 30 FPS. More on that in a moment. Go to releases and download the latest OVL. FPSLocker.OVL Overlay On your SD card, open the Switch folder and dot .Overlays Now move FPSLocker.Overlay to the SD card Replace the old file if prompted Now if you don't see this Overlay folder, make sure Tesla Menu is properly installed and that hidden folders are visible in your File Explorer In FileZilla you can click server and check force showing hidden files. Now, head back to Massagrader's repositories page once again. Go to FPS Locker Warehouse. As stated in the description, here you will find a list of 30 frames per second locked games and if they have FPS Locker configs that allow going above 30 frames per second. The FPS Locker Warehouse has config files to improve games. Basically, these are config files that tweak game settings to help a game stay at or close to a solid 30 frames per second, or increase the frame rate of certain games from 30 frames per second to 60. Scroll down and you can see a complete list of games in the warehouse and what issues they may have. I'm not exactly sure how often this list is updated, so there may be more games with a config file that aren't listed here. And as it says right here, it is recommended to use the overlays built-in option to download configs. I'll show you how to do that a bit later. Click here to download the latest zip. Open it, extract it, open the folder. Now move the Atmosphere and Salty SD folder to the root of your SD card. Make sure to go back if you were in the overlay folder. Replace old files if prompted. Now, head back to Massagrader's profile. One last time. Select Reverse NXRT. This is used to switch <laughs> between handheld and docked mode in real time. For example, you can be playing docked and switch to the handheld mode profile. This will drop the resolution and tweak other game settings. 
Developers do this with pretty much all Switch games to help with things like battery life. Now since handheld mode runs games at a lower resolution, we can take advantage of that with overclocking and FPS locker to increase the performance of our games when playing docked. You will get a drop in quality, but the performance boost is worth it in my opinion. Now, click releases and click reverse and XRT OVL OVL. Move this to the overlays folder. Once again, replace it if updating to the latest version. Now, if you used FTP and or USB file transferring to move files over to your switch, reboot the switch so all sys modules initialize properly. Hold power, select power options, and restart. If you used an SD card reader, simply enter RCM and boot into Atmosphere. Now, open the homebrew menu using Title Takeover. Hold R while launching a game. Now, open SysClock. You'll see current system clocks, temperatures, and profiles per game. Turn on Enable Service. You can set unique CPU, GPU, and RAM speeds for docked, handheld, and charging handheld, even official charger mode and USB charger. Using the official charger in handheld mode will allow the system to reach docked clock speeds while in handheld mode, which is higher than using just a normal charger. You can also set temporary system-wide overrides. It would run at these clock speeds no matter what you're doing on the console. Now, head back to the home menu, close the game, and open Tesla menu. The default hotkey is L, D pad down, and pushing the right stick. FPS Locker lets you set target frame rates and apply patch files. Reverse NXRT lets you instantly switch between handheld and docked profiles. Status Monitor shows frame rate, resolution, temps, and more. SysClock shows the current profile and allows real time adjustments to clock speeds. Now let's test these out, starting off with Sonic and Shadow Generations. At stock settings, the switch caps at 30 frames per second in this game. But with the tools we just set up, you can push this game to 60. Open Tesla, select FPS Locker, go to Advanced Settings, and you can see right here it says FPS Locker Patches, found a valid config file. Plugin didn't apply patch to game, patch file exists. Select Convert Config to Patch File, Patch file created successfully. Restart the game and change FPS target to apply the patch. You can also select check and download config file here, which will check the GitHub page for the most recent config file for this game. No new config available. It usually takes about 30 seconds to look up the GitHub and find a new config file if one exists. In this case, there's no new config file. And now I will restart the game Open it up, and I'm going to enable the FPS counter in Status Monitor. FPS counter, there we go. And it did say to change the frame rate. Open up Tesla menu again, change FPS target, Status Monitor, counter. See the frame rate there. Now in this case, the game is still running at 30 frames. Open up FPS Locker again, change it to 60. Now let's see. The game is definitely hitting above 30 frames per second, but it's kind of funky. Now let's use SysClock. Just a heads up, it may lag when you try bringing up Tesla. That's okay. Worst case scenario, restart your switch. Open up SysClock. And 
I already have this at the max clock speeds, as you can see here. You can play around with it and see what works best for you. I found that just pushing it to max works best. And it's still not hitting that consistent 60. So, let's open up Tesla menu once more. Go over to reverse NXRT. Change system control. Now you can see it says reverse NXRT is running. Controlled by system? No, just disabled that. Mode fake dock. Default display resolution was not checked. Okay, now we're going to change it. And you'll notice the quality takes a little dip. It looks a little fuzzier. However, it is now hitting that basically locked 60 frames per second. And of course, I'll hop into a level and test it out. All right, here we go. This game looks so good at 60. Like, I cannot go back to playing this at 30 after having witnessed it at 60. Woo! <laughs> no! I missed it. Oh, yeah. Woohoo! Oh. Oh boy. Oh yeah. And that is all for the video. I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial. Make sure to leave a like, drop a comment, and subscribe for more content. What do you think of this? Would you like to see comparisons of games running at stock settings versus overclocked with the tools in this video? And for those that primarily play dock, is it worth losing quality for a performance boost? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Shout out to my channel members, thank you so much for your support, and thank you for watching until the end. Make sure to join the channel so you can help support me and get these videos early. You can also find affiliate links and my socials in the description. On the left you'll see a playlist of my Switch Mod tutorials, definitely check that out. And on the right, a video that YouTube recommends just for you. Have a good day, good night, whatever time you're watching this, and God bless. See ya. Fox Christie.